So now let's just uh, create a new class. So I'm going to create a new folder and that folder I will create inside the users. Okay, so right click on users, new directory and let's give it name as user preferences user preferences okay and press enter so this is our user preferences folder which is created inside the users folder okay as you can see here now right click on user preferences folder new dot file and let's create user underscore preferences dot dot file is created inside the user preferences folder so you can create a class remember user preferences or you can say remember the user so first of all the first thing that we will implement here is the method which will be for save user info save or you can say remember locally okay using the shared preferences i'm talking about so anyways let's just quickly implement static future this method will return nothing so we can say void and let's give this method name as user info will be asynchronous so let's first initialize the shared preferences for that we have to also add the dependency okay so go to the pubspec.yml file also open up your favorite browser go to the pub.dev site and simply search for shared underscore preferences which is this one shared underscore preferences with null safety click on installing and let's quickly copy the dependency and come back here to the project and simply pass that dependency in here below the flutter toast share for Francis okay click on pub get in order to install share for Francis package in our cloth app project so it has been added successfully installed successfully now come back to the user for Francis dot dot file and we can write here shared preferences which is this one preferences to wet shared preferences dot get instance so we create an instance of the shared preferences okay we initialize an instance of the shared preferences now with the help of this instance preferences we can set the data that is save or you can say remember user data so first of all we can say json encode and to this we will pass the user info user info dot to json so we encode the user information to the json format okay when we save data locally with the help of shared preferences then we save it in json format okay specifically in this case in this project we will be doing like this okay so now we will assign this to a variable let's give it name as user json data and then we will set this data locally with the help of shared preferences with the help of our this instance preferences so for that purpose we can say wait preferences instance dot set string and the key name will be current user current user we have to use specific keywords for example current user I write because it is the online user okay the user who is already logged in okay so please go with the same key names okay otherwise if you use different keywords then later on maybe you will get confused because I will have different keywords and you will have different keywords so current user and the value of which is uh, inside the user JSON data so in this way we save the user data 
the user who logged in successfully that user data we saved locally with the help of shared preferences okay we save it to the local storage to the phone storage with the help of shared preferences now we save it because we have to uh, remember that user okay because that information uh, we will use in the app that is the online user information we will use in the app for example uh, when the user add item to the cart when the user place order so in that case we will need for example the user id that is which user is going to add this uh, order or which user is going to which user is trying to add items to their cart okay so that's why we save the online or you can say the current user information that is the user who is already logged in who logged in successfully basically so that user record we saved to the phone local storage with the help of shared preferences and that is why we give this method this unique name which is basically save user or you can say save remember user okay because we have to remember when we save the user information to the phone local storage with the help of shared preferences then it basically means that we remember that user so this is our first method okay for our remember user preferences class so now we have to call this method here okay and here we can just say vet and the method which is remember user prefs remember user preferences and the method which is save remember user save or remember user okay which is the method name to and to this we have to pass the information that is the user who is logged in successfully or you can say this online user information we have to pass to it okay so let me tell you we pass that the user who logged in successfully okay or you can say this online user information who logged in successfully he is online now okay he or she is online now so that information we pass to our this method save remember user so this is receiving here okay this user information is receiving here now this information we want to save to the phone local storage so that's why f with the help of shared preferences okay so first we create the shared preferences instance and then we convert that data to the json format because when we saved information to the phone local storage we save it uh, in JSON format. So first we convert that online user information to JSON format and we assign it to this user JSON data string variable. And then with the help of shared preferences instance we save that data to the phone local storage. This is so simple and so easy. So once it is saved successfully uh, we will uh, send the user that is after executing this code successfully we want to send the user to the to the app main screen and which will be basically our dashboard home screen so for that purpose uh, inside the users folder okay right click on users folder new and let's create a new folder and we will give it name as fragments okay fragments so inside the users folder we have a subfolder created which is by the name fragments now right click on fragments new dot file and let's create dashboard dashboard of for the of our fragments fragments are basically it will be our screen for example home fragment screen order uh, fragment screen uh, favorites or wish list fragment screen and profile fragment screen okay so this will be you can say this dashboard will be our default screen for all or you can say dashboard of fragments dashboard of fragments it will be the file name okay dashboard of fragments dot dot file let's import the material dot dot and let's create stateless widget we will give it name as dashboard of fragments and for now we will do nothing but just we will display a message okay so we can say 
return let us return scaffold widget and let's display an app bar and it will be app bar and in the app bar we can display just a title using the text widget that is this is dashboard just like this so now in here on our login screen dot dot file we can simply send the user after successful login to the screen which is dashboard okay dashboard of fragment so we can say get dot to dash dashboard of fragments okay dashboard of fragments just like this if you want to add some delay let's say of two or three seconds then you can also do that for example we will say future dot delayed duration milliseconds 2000 which means two seconds comma and we can say get dot to dashboard of fragments that is when the this code is executed successfully so after this after two seconds just send the user to the dashboard of fragments where we will see an app bar and on the app bar we will see this dashboard message title okay so now I'm going to test the app so let's just click on this play button in, in order to install the app on our phone so let's just log in then password and let's click on login button so we do not get any response the reason is because here inside the login user now method we have to put this code in a try catch block now what I mean is cut this whole piece of code okay what that is inside the login user now method okay cut this whole code inside it and then first of all you have to write right here try you have to use the try catch method and then after try we have catch that is in case if any error occur the exception message we have to print so inside the try we have to paste our code back which is this code okay which we write in this video here it is okay and then if any error occur then we will print the exception message so we can say error and using the concatenation sign plus we can say e which is the exception dot to string that error message basically or you can write here error okay error msg error message and we can say error message dot to string so that's it also when we uh, call our this method okay when the user click on the login button we have to validate the form before calling so before calling this method we have to write here if form key dot current state dot validate we have to validate our form our login form so if it is validated then in that case we are going to call up our method which is login user now before testing the application make sure to close the debugging and we have to go back to our API connection we have to check our IPv address open up the command prompt 
and just write here IP config IP config so IP before address okay this one IP before address so as you can see it has been changed IP before address so we have to just copy this okay just copy this and then paste that here now once you do these changes now let's just test the app so the app is running now and now let's just quickly test the app for the login so now if I click on login then it shows this error break which means we have some error and that error is the exception okay error message format exception unexpected character unexpected character at character 1 so let's fix this error now remember uh, some of the two other students they have commented that they also get an error like this in the sign up so remember whenever you get an error like this it simply means that you have wrote something wrong in the backend code and the backend code I simply means the dot PHP code so for example in the current scenario we get this error for the login so we have to check our login dot PHP backend code so it means that there must be some error in my login.php backend code so I have to check each and every line of code with great focus and care so for example my error is in here I forgot to write here this okay these brackets because when the row is found it will be saved to our user record okay so make sure to add these brackets with it so this was my error in the backend that's why I got this error okay which says format exception unexpected character add character one okay so please make sure to write this and once you do this first we will save this backend code okay by clicking file save all and then we will go back to our flutter application and you can either hot restart okay and now if I come here and now if I click on the login button then you are logged in successfully and here we go congratulations we are logged in successfully and as you know that let me give you a small overview of the code as you know that when we logged in successfully then we save or you can say uh, remember the user that is the information which is coming from the MySQL database as a response for that specific user let's say that user is in our case when I log in here it was John John at the red gmail.com so John ID John name John email and John password that will be assigned to this user info now this user info we pass to our save user save remember user method on our remember user preferences okay and basically that information which we pass from here okay we receive that information here as a parameter so we encode or you can say uh, that user information we convert to JSON format okay we encode that and then we save it to the phone local storage using the shared preferences with the key name current user so you can say that in the local storage of the phone now we have the information of this current user who logged in successfully which is John okay so John ID John name John email and John password 